Okay, now that we have the bulk of the engine assembled, it's time to do some of the peripheral parts, like I've said before. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the coil back on. So here's our coil. It still has the bolts in it. Um, this obviously bolts onto the flywheel side. You have these two standoffs that it's going to screw into. Uh, so what we're going to do on this one is I'm going to rotate the magnets out of the way and work off the back side to start. Uh, I prefer to use a little bit of red Loctite. You may choose to use blue, but I like red because this is something you don't want slipping. And not a lot, but just a little bit of the red Loctite on each thread, just a drop. And then we will screw it onto the motor. At this point, don't worry about spacing it or anything like that. We're just going to get it mounted. Also, as was stated before by Eddie, um, some of these motors will have some plastic caps that are going to sit over this. They're little, almost like little insulators. This motor did not have them, so we're not going to put them back on. It won't affect anything. We'll get these bolts down. We want it to be loose to start. Okay, now what we need to do is set the flywheel gap. Um, they do make gapping shims that you can buy. They're probably about eight or ten dollars. But in all honesty, what works great is just a simple business card. So what we're going to use is a business card. What I like to do is actually slide that card in there, and then rotate the the uh, the flywheel around the magnets down here until the magnets are up. And the magnets will actually help pull the coil down into place. So you can see it's actually really stuck in there now. At this point, I'm just going to use my thumb and push down on the coil. Really put some pressure on there. <clears throat> and then back and forth, I'm going to snug these bolts up. Really give it a good snug. And that's it. And then what we can do is we can just wiggle the card back out and make sure that you can visually see the gap which we do and it doesn't interfere with anything so we're good to go with the coil also remember that red Loctite really needs about 24 hours to set up so we don't really want to go out and run this engine immediately get get it put back together slammed into the car we want everything to be able to set up all the Loctite and everything okay now that we've got our coil on I think we're going to go next to putting one of the plastic shrouds on. So we're going to get our plastic shroud. And this is pretty simple. Obviously, it's pretty self explanatory. It needs to go on. It just slides back over. You can see there's some little catches that will fit right into the, uh, the flywheel shroud. Just make sure that those are in the correct place. There's not really anything that's going to be holding this in at the moment, with the exception of maybe this little grommet. And again, that's more of just a grommet, not to hold this into place. Once that's in, we do have one screw that we're going to put in on the back side that will hold the shroud on on this side. Here's that screw. This, we're going to use a little bit of blue Loctite. When in doubt on this motor, put a little Loctite on it. See, so much vibration that everything rattles loose eventually. That's in place. Again, making sure our little deals there are lined up. At this point, we're going to take our whole cover, just get a rag and wipe this off. While we're doing this, we'll give it a quick inspection, make sure that it's not cracked or damaged in any way, make sure all the mounts are solid and there's no cracks. Uh, the engine is part of the structural integrity of the entire Baja, so this piece itself is needs to be fully intact and undamaged to give uh, maximum rigidity to the entire car. It looks like it's in good shape. I don't see any cracks or damage. So the first thing we want to do is take our kill switch and kind of insert the kill switch. You can see there's these two little tabs. Those need to be going up and down. So we just slide that guy on, rotate the whole thing, there are little standoffs that will line up front and back. Make sure everything top bottom is all lined up. 
and at that point I'm going to use two bolts just to kind of get this guy held together to start. Do one on this side and one on that side. Again, I'm not going to wrench these down quite yet. I want to make sure everything is lined up. And making sure that these little tabs here are in fact lined up and they are. So that tightened down. This actually gets removed. I'm just using it for alignment purposes because there's a different mounting bolt that'll go there later. So put that one down. Tighten that guy. And then I'll remove this one, put it where it belongs now that we know everything is matching up. Snug these down. Then we have these two kind of self-tapping Allen or uh, Phillips heads. They're going to hold the plastic shroud to the housing. These two right here. Snug those up. Remember you're threading into plastic so you don't want to over torque these just until you see the seam disappear. And you can see it just pull that seam up nice and nice and smooth. And there we go. Last on this part is obviously the pull starter. You guys already inspected this early on when you took it off so we know it's good to go. So we're going to put that on. Four bolts. These bolts, you want to make sure they're snug, but you don't really need to wrench these down too tight. Again, you are, you know, tightening them down on top of plastic. So snug, but don't kill it. And there we go. We basically have the bulk of our engine done. Last we have to do is the carb and intake manifold or isolator block and the air filters.